Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Glory. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Worship his name. Come on, get excited. I'm still not hearing you guys. Glory to God. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Is that the coldest it's going to get? Is that the coldest it's going to get? Yeah. It's warm in here, huh? Okay, I think I'm the only one. No one said amen. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Praise God. You know, I see our little cheerleaders here. I got to see them on film, on Facebook. I said, man, there's some bad man pajamas, boy. You know, they do real good, real good. Saw an angel up on top, a flyer and all that. I'm like, wow. I never thought I would see her do that. But she does that. Praise God. Beautiful, the talent that God has given us. Amen. And uh, the freedom that we have, for you guys that don't know, you you have a freedom. We were, we were uh, slaves to sin. We, when we were out there in the world, we had to do what Satan told us to do, live in sin and obey sin. We, we were, uh, welcome everyone, welcome to Turning Point Fellowship on uh, uh, Facebook, welcome on uh, YouTube. Welcome to our thing. I just want to encourage the church that at one time we were slaves to sin. We had no strength, no knowledge of what, uh, how the enemy had us. I'm raising my hand. I, I did a lot of foolish things out there and didn't know about it. Thought it that's life. Talked to my cousin here that grew up with us in Compton, California, and seen a lot of things. Seen death, seen people get beat with bats and bumper jacks. You think that's part of life. You think it's normal. And uh, he just said, Angel, that wasn't normal life. It wasn't. That's That doesn't happen in life every day. That happens in places that the devil is controlling. And uh, God has blessed us with a new life now. A new mindset, a new heart, a new way to live. The choice is yours. If you want to be happy, you can be happy. If you want to smile, you can smile. No one can stop you. No one can stop you. Uh, we go through stuff that will try to put a Fuji face on you and try to get your mindset going in another direction. But you have the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ living inside of you, the very spirit, the very essence of who God living inside of you. We should be rejoicing. We should be glad that you've been chosen by God to serve God. Amen. To honor God. George, God chose you, man. Handpicked by God. Handpicked. Every one of us here that are under my voice and we say we're Christians, God handpicked you. Celia, I picked Celia Padilla to be mine. Before the foundation, James Goodman, the good man right here, boom, to serve me and to honor me. Martha, to serve God. It's a beautiful thing when you recognize that and get that revelation that no matter what we do, God, God picked you. It must estás escogida por Dios. Dios te escogió para, para servirle. That's what he did. He, he's done that for us. And he's forgiven us all our sins. All our sins have been forgiven. Because we mess up, we think that, you know what, oh, God's going to punish me. That's the last thing God wants to do. That's the last thing I want to do. I, my, my little son did something when he was 10 years old. It took me a week to whip him. I whipped him because he had to come into him. But I really had to psych myself up because that's my boy. You know what I mean? And I, I'm going to get you, boy. I'm going to whip you, boy. I'm going to whip you. Watch. What you did was in right. You know, you're going to get it. I had to build myself up to do it, you know. Then when I got him three times, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I licked him real good on his on his buttocks. I went in a room and cried. <laughs> you know, because that was my boy, man. God, just, that's the last thing that God wants to do is punish us. God, God is love, and he wants to love on us. He wants to just pour grace all upon you like oil just being poured upon you grace and some of you know what I'm talking about right now the grace of God amen the goodness of God where he brought you from 10 
<laughs> Who would imagine you being in a church on a Sunday? Come on, my brother. Amen. <laughs> Who could imagine that kind of stuff? Only God could do that. Elizabeth, only God could bring you here. No, my mom brings me here. No, God brings you here. You're going to come to, you're going to be a Christian all your life. Even when you get older and you're 37 and you get married and all that, you're going to be a Christian. And you're going to say, I remember that little fat Mexican guy told me I was going to be a Christian. I'll be God, you know, but you, you'll be, a, you're going to be a Christian, yeah, in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you guys. Margaret, you were chosen by God to serve him, to honor him, to bless him. What a blessing that is, my dad. That's why we should be smiling, Margarita. Come on, man. From the pit of hell, he brought you out of it, man. To the glory of God, man. I, I, I'm, just so, uh, I'm just so excited about what God is uh, telling me and what he's speaking to me. And I'm in a fight. I'm in a big, big battle, man. It's a battle. But I'm choosing to believe God. I'm choosing to believe God's word. That all things are going to work out for the good. For those who love the Lord and for those who are called according to his purpose, it all works out. It may not work out the way I want it, at the time I want it. It's all in his timing. And all I can do is just wait on the Lord. And we're going to talk about God's faithfulness today. How faithful God is. And he wants to teach us to be faithful. He knows we're going to blow it. He knows we're going to make mistakes. But we stay faithful in our hearts. We fall down and we what? We fall down and what? We fall down and what? We, amen, we get up. Just like a football player, right? Gets knocked down, he gets up. You're a sinner. You've been knocked down many times, right? But you got up. You're going to say, oh, I'm going to let this guy just I'm gonna step away from here. I'm not going to let him kick my butt. He's going to get some now, you know, right? And that's how we do the devil. You, oh, oh, you wanted some trouble? You just found it. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going to dance. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be glad no matter what goes on. Learn to dance in the rain. When it's raining on you, learn to dance. Amen. So I just want to welcome everyone uh, that's at home. I pray that you come out. We have potluck today. You still got time. You don't live very far. You still got time to come out here. We're going to worship God for a good time. We're going to bless the Lord. I want to encourage you guys here to encourage them. You guys encourage them. You know how you do that, Elizabeth? By clapping, giving a little cheer. Yeah, baby. Amen. Little hand pump, little hand raising. A smile when they look at you, smile at them. Don't. No, smile, don't mad dog them. Smile at them and stuff, you know. That's how you do it, James. Smile at your lovely wife up here, you know, when she's singing. You know, no matter what goes on, you just smile at her, amen. She'll smile back. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> amen. And that, that, that's what we're to do. We're to love one another and bless one another. Amen. So encourage the worship team. They need some encouragement, too. I want you to bless them and honor them. Amen? So let us pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. We're going to purposely come to worship you. We didn't come because it's potluck. We didn't come because it's communion. We came because of you, Lord Jesus Christ. We came because of you, Heavenly Father. We came because of you, Holy Spirit. You brought us here. And we're grateful, we're thankful for our salvation, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the grace, the goodness, and the mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that our ears will be open, our eyes will perceive what the Spirit is looking at, our ears will hear what the Spirit is speaking. Our hearts will be open to the salvation, the righteousness of who God is in our lives. Father, teach us that we would teach others, Lord. That we would teach the sinner and the lost of how good you are and how you understand them. That you're not here to judge them right now. There's a day coming and it's coming soon. 
that you will return as a judge. But right now, Father, you come as a graceful Lord. You come as the Lord of salvation. So, Father, teach us that we would walk in your ways, that we would be instructed in your ways. Teach us to be sensitive to your spirit, not to question your spirit, not to doubt your spirit, but to obey the spirit. I pray right now, Father, for those that are on their way, that no harm will befall them, no breakdowns, no accidents, no flat tires, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place, Lord. I pray right now that you would lift up our hearts as we surrender our hearts to you. As we surrender our thoughts, our minds, Father, casting every sin and every burden, Father, to the side. Getting rid of it right now, Lord God. Just ridding ourselves of those things and coming in freedom, into freedom, Lord, into liberty. That we raise our hands and we clap our hands and we move our feet and we jump up and down in the jubilee of our salvation, Lord. We're so honored, so grateful and thankful for what you've done, what you're doing, Lord. Hmm. I pray, Father, that the blind will see today, that the lame will walk, Father, the deaf will hear, that the mute will speak, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, though some don't understand what I'm saying, I pray that spiritually their ears will be open. Spiritually their eyes will be open. Spiritually their heart will receive, Lord God. I pray spiritually, Father, they will walk with you. I pray this, Father, I believe this, therefore I declare this, Lord. Bless our worship as we worship you. As we sing unto you and not be, Father, concerned who's next to us, to the right or left of us or in front of us or behind us, Lord. We come to worship our God. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you know better than somebody has to shout hallelujah.
where his presence is here. For what you have desired in your heart, the Lord grants you today. You would receive it. Whatever it is, whatever it is you have called out to God, receive that. It's happening right now. God is the blessing. Not what you ask for. God, our Father, is the blessing. Jesus Christ is the gift of life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth that lives within you. Receive it. If you need healing, raise your hands and receive the healing. If it's for your mind, that your mind ain't thinking straight, it's thinking negative, it's thinking wanting to quit, doubt and disbelief, receive the healing. Receive the mind of Christ. Some of you that have been living compromised lives that you know in your heart. No one's trying to put you on blast. But you know in your heart that, you know what, I've compromised them. I've stepped back. I step forward today. Take that step by faith. A little step before, just take a step forward. By faith. For you who need healing in your body, your kidneys, your intestines, your heart your ligaments, your muscles. Doctors told you had arthritis. Right now you can be healed in Jesus' name. Just, just believe it. High blood pressure. Can't stand in the presence of God. High cholesterol. Cannot stand in the presence of God. Your pain from your past. Cannot stand in the presence of God. For the presence is here. Forgive. Forgive as you have been forgiven. God has forgiven you all your sins. Your, your past, your present, your future sins. They've all been forgiven. Release that person. Release that man. Release that woman. Release that mother, that father, that aunt, that uncle. That child molester, let him go. That you would be free. Doubt, disbelief, let it go. That spirit of infirmity, let it go. Right now. Release it. Don't say my diabetes. Don't say my high blood pressure. Don't say my past. That belongs to the devil. You've been set free through the blood of Christ on, on the cross. You've been redeemed. You've been bought with that blood. Healing belongs to you. Freedom is yours. Liberty is yours. You can smile again. You can jump up and down. You can joke around. You can be that person. You don't have to be ugly. You can be free. You can be free. In Jesus' name. It's happening right now if you would believe it. I do not doubt God. Allergies got to go in Jesus' name. Allergies go in the name of Jesus. for forgiveness it only happens when you ask you gotta ask the Lord forgive me for my sins forget about his sins forget about her sins your sins your sins we've all sinned and we've all fallen short but we gotta ask for forgiveness it doesn't just happen because you come to church it's because you open your mouth and you ask God forgive me I've blown it I messed up. And he's not going to deny you. God doesn't deny you when you come with a righteous heart and a true heart. He forgives. And you people, let them go. Even if they do it again, let them go. Don't hold it against them. Let it go.
God is healing right now. I want you all to just close your eyes. Everyone here, close your eyes. Don't look to the left, right. If you could follow pastor's instructions. Just close your eyes and raise your hands. I receive my healing for my spirit, my soul, and my body. I ask for forgiveness of my sins. Father, I have sinned. And only in front of you have I sinned. I release these sins. And I receive your love and your grace for my life. For your grace is sufficient for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. Believing and having faith is trusting in what God says. Amen. Having confidence in what he said in his word. I'm going to borrow this from a minister I heard minister and not talk about my individual sins. But I'll just tell you, I was a heathen too. I was a heathen just like many people that are out there in the world. And I, I don't judge not one of you. I, I, I'd be a fool to judge you. I'm a man of God. I'm here to love you. I'm here to give you understanding of God's word. I'm here to enlighten you of what God can do for you if you would only believe. That's why Jesus always told the ones he healed and the ones he forgave. He, he said... <clears throat> Let it be done according to your faith, according to your confidence, according to your trust, according to what you believe that I am for you. And they believed they would see and God restored their sight. They believed they could walk and they got up and they walked. They believed that they were forgiven and they lived in a freedom. The only person that has you in bondage is yourself. Because the enemy doesn't have that strength to do it once you ask God to forgive you. You got to change your mind. Change your mind about who God is and what he's done for you. And just walk in that now. Walk in the true love of God because he loves you. God loves you so much that he's calling you to him. He doesn't love you like a man. He doesn't love you like a woman. He loves you like God, unconditionally. And I want you guys to know that it's, it's so vital in a believer's life that we know that God loves us. I got that revelation that God loved me because I didn't love myself. I wasn't happy with myself. But as God began to pour his love upon me, my mind began to change and my life began to change. So for me to judge someone be, would be foolish. And if we judge anybody here, it's foolishly. The only reason you would judge them is because you love them and you want to get them right. And it's not even a judgment. It's just like, brother, we shouldn't be doing that any longer as Christians. We should be living lives that are separated from the world and now for God. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. We're going to go ahead and uh, give uh, right now. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering in Jesus' name. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. Raise your hand and raise it up high. You should always come to the house of God with something. Always to give to him. If it's a praise, if it's a worship, if it's love, if it's a thank you, we should come with something in our hearts. And if God has blessed you materially, materially and, and blessed you monetarily, to give to the Lord. You ain't giving the pastor. You're giving to the Lord, to the house of God. As you can see from last week, we're not making money hands over fists. If we did, I wouldn't have asked you for the money to pay the electricity bill. 
we had money to do all that, it would have been done. I wouldn't have asked. I asked you because we didn't have the money. We're even. Thank God. But if we all become tithers and givers, we would be over the top. And if God done, has done something for you in your life, I would give to the Lord. If it's a dollar, if that's, if that's what the Lord puts in your heart to put, give a dollar. It says $5, $50, $100, $500. $500 whatever God tells you to put in this envelope, I would do that because he wants to bless you like that. I've learned that, Brother George. Putting amounts of money in here that crazy for me. <laughs> crazy for me to put that kind of money in there, but the Lord always filled it up. Somehow, some way, he always did it. So I just encourage you guys to give with a grateful heart and a thankful heart. Even you young adults now, you know, young adults, oh, uh, if you, you're a young adult and you have your own job, your mom's and that, uh, stuff doesn't care, cover you no more. You got to cover yourself now. I have my own job, so I tithe and I give. Give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart and thankful heart in Jesus' name.
Where's Miss Gonzalez? All right. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on. Where's Regina and Tomas? Oh, just Regina? Come on, Miss Regina Cordero. Come on. She's. I want you guys to stretch your hands forth in, in agreement. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Father God, humble, Father God. We thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for this time that we're here in this fellowship, Father God. We thank you for this tithe and offering, Father God. We pray that it multiplies and stretches farther than our imagination, Father God. I pray for the word that's going to be spoken today, Father God. I, I pray that it builds everybody's hearts, Father God, that they carry it throughout the week, Father God, in their days, Father God, and that they share it with one another, Father God, and that this day is, day is just blessed, Father God, and that it's just full of peace and love and joy. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the youth in today. The only reason, because the air conditioning is not working up there, and it's hot, it's hot up there. So I'm gonna keep you guys in to sit down. Is that all right, Daniel, and David? Is that cool? What about my cheerleaders? Is that cool? It's hot, it's hot up there. I'm just thinking of you guys. But we're gonna go ahead and release our children. Let's give them a good round of applause. Amen. Lord, bless the Lord. Imagine where you were at, you know, when you were 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, 17, 15, where you were at. <laughs> They're in church. You know, they don't want to be here, but you know what? They're in church. Amen. They're in church. And it's going to affect them. Their, 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 their carnality, their flesh is like, no quiero estar aquí. But that's all right because their spirit man is receiving. That's why when they fall asleep, let them fall asleep because their spirit man is still receiving. They're under the word. God can get through a sleep. Amen? Don't think that he can't. Uh, they did an awesome job. Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Our worship team. Good job. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and release our worship team. Praise God. Come on. Give them a good round of applause. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, they're getting better and better, you know. But we got to participate, too. It's just not a, it's not a performance, you know. I, I don't like the smoke and the lights and all that stuff. That's not my style, you know. Uh, I, you know, they asked me if they could put these lights up, and I was, mm, mm. And they said, no, it's for the cross. I said, okay. The brighten up the cross is fine. Amen. But not for ourselves. You know, we're not here to entertain. We're here to worship. We're here to praise God. But we need, we need all of us corporately to, to worship God together. He loves when his babies sing to him. How many have grandchildren? Remember when they were like one, two years old and they would sing? And they didn't sing very well. But to grandma and grandpa, oh, look how beautiful. They sing, and your friends are like, mm, your comadre are like, Ugh. but to you it's beautiful. And that's how it is with us, with God. When we sing to the Lord, he's the ancient of days. We're babies for him, but he loves it. He loves when you sing to him. When, when you bless him, he loves it, you know. So I just encourage you guys to, to sing to the Lord. Even if the person next to you doesn't sing, you sing. You bless the Lord, Amen. I sound like a crow when I sing, but I still sing. You know, I, I, I told the worship team this morning that I don't sing. I worship. I can't sing. I couldn't hold a note in a wheelbarrow if I had to, you know, but I, but I worship the Lord. I love God. I'm grateful. That's all I want you guys to do is just be grateful and thankful to the Lord. If you have your Bibles, put it in your right hand. If you have your iPads, put them in your right hand. Oh, cabezón acá este terco todavía no. No, she brought her Bible. Praise God. 
Put them in your right hand and say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You can thump your Bibles on a Sunday. Go and have a seat. You can thump your Bibles. It's okay if they call you a Bible thumper. Praise God. Just don't thump it against somebody's head or nothing like that, you know. But uh, be, uh, speak that word. Speak it loud and speak it clear. Amen. Just looking for a weight. I'm going to leave that fan on back there. It feels good. Praise God. Uh, I want you guys to turn to the book of Lamentations. I didn't sing you the scriptures, huh, Jesus? Bad pastor. Uh, if you would turn to Lamentations 3, 22 and, and 23, you guys uh, uh, already know, you guys know these scriptures. They've been uh, spoken to you and said to you. I'm talking about the faithfulness of our God. Uh, God has been faithful to every one of us, even when we don't even recognize it. I've been saved for 28 years. Thank you, sir. I've been saved for 28 years. I got saved when I was uh, 34 years old. I got saved. I gave my life to Christ. My life was in crisis, and I needed Christ in my life to bring everything down and calm everything down in my life. Uh, I was going crazy. I was literally going crazy on the material and the stuff I was, the substance I was putting in my body. It was just, uh, the bodies aren't made for that. The body is not made for the legal substance or even some of the uh, pharmaceutical substance that they prescribe to us. The body is not made for that. That's why they give you a pill for your liver. Then they give you a pill to counteract that pill. And then they give you another pill to counteract those two pills. You're like, oh, my God. When does it stop with Jesus? Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus still heals. Jesus still delivers. Jesus still forgives. Jesus is still on your side. He wants us to win. He wants you to be successful. I'm not talking about money like some of us think here in America. Successful in life. Some joy. Some gladness. Some love. Some peace. You know, how much would you guys give away, you know, to have some, the peace of God? Five hundred, a thousand dollars? Give a lot of money away for some peace. Right? How about to get along with your, uh, with your wife, with your husband, to get along with them? I know some of us yearn for that. We yearn for that. And it's a beautiful thing to yearn that. God desires that. And he wants to bring peace into our lives. He wants to bring joy. Remember when you dated? Do you guys remember that when you were dating? Oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah, it was beautiful, huh? It was good, huh? Fun. You know, couldn't wait for him to call or wait for him to come over. You, you're like, oh, man, he's coming. Anthony's going to come over, man, right? Uh, Eric's coming over. All right, man. You know, and we play it off when they come up. You know, we try to act like that's nothing. But inside, you're full of joy. You're full of gladness. All right, amen. I'll say amen, man. I came with an Amen. If you didn't come with an amen, you know. Even if you struggle, God is still good. And I, I, I want to read this to you. This is when Israel was being judged by God. And uh, the prophet Jeremiah begins to recognize the goodness of God in his life. Because you have trouble and devastations in your life and distractions. Doesn't mean you sin. 
Sometimes God allows that in your life because you've stepped away from God and drawn further from God. So he brings you closer to him through these things, right? When you struggle, you begin to pray. I always said this, Charlie, that one of your children will always keep you close to God. You may have five, but there's one that's going to keep you real close to God. Going to keep you praying, going to keep you calling out to God, going to keep you believing God. Can I get an amen? amen. I know uh, I do. And it switches in seasons. That, then that kid starts acting correctly and righteously, and then the other one starts misbehaving. You're like, oh my God. When does it end? It does it. A young man asked me, Angel, when your kids, because I was oh, much older than him, he says, when your kids turn 18, it's over, it's done, oh, praise God, and no more. I said, they'll be your kids and when they're 40, 50, 60 years old, they're going to be your kids. Sorry, Margarita, that's the way it works. <laughs> she was, I know. <laughs> it, it works that way. But God allows things in our lives to draw closer. And here Jeremiah, he understood this. He understood that Israel was in trouble. He understood that God allowed things in Israel because of their disobedience. And God will allow things because you disobey what you disobeyed in the action, in the attitude. He'll allow that to go on in your life until you say, forgive me, Father. I've sinned. Why, you wonder why you have a stinky attitude because you haven't asked for forgiveness. You wonder why you're struggling in certain things in your life. Because you have not asked for forgiveness. And just because you ask for forgiveness doesn't mean it goes away like that. It takes time to recover, to be restored by God. Sometimes there's a miracle, what's called a miracle. And it happens just like that. You can't even explain it because it's a miracle. A miracle happens right away. A healing takes place, takes time. And you got to learn how to be still sometimes in the presence of God when God is doing a healing. No more pointing fingers. No more talking about what she did or what he did. If you receive your healing today for your marriage, for yourself, let's not let the, the enemy allow to bring that up to you. Because he works through your emotions. He works through your mind. And we got to learn how to overcome that through the word of God. And Jeremiah understood this. He understood there was an impending judgment. But yet in the midst of this bad news, he remembered the Lord's mercies. He remembered the Lord's compassion and faithfulness and goodness. We must remember the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. The compassions. We're here today because of the mercy of God, every one of us. He forgave you. And he allowed you to live. You think you just woke up on your own. It wasn't. God woke you up. And if you don't say thank you every morning, you can learn now to say thank you every morning. Thank you, Father, for waking me up. Thank you for the help. Thank you for my children. Somebody's children didn't wake up today. Some, someone's husband didn't wake up today. Someone's wife did not wake up today. And they're in mourning. They're in devastation, some of them, and hurting. But God was merciful to you. Jeremiah realized that it was only uh, through God that he had hope for the salvation of Israel. And salvation here, he's not talking about salvation of eternal life. He's talking about salvation of the earth, that you would be saved from your troubles. You'd be saved from yourself because sometimes your worst enemy is who? You. God gives you something, gives you a vision, gives you a dream. He gives you an instruction, and you talk yourself out of it before you even took a step toward it. God has asked you to do things, and you would just talk, I'm too dumb. I don't have an education. I'm too fat. I'm too tall. I'm too skinny. I'm, I'm too dark. I'm too light. 
I'm not tough enough. I'm not smart enough. You talk yourself out of it before you even get the opportunity. Someone gives you an opportunity, take it. Try it. You never know. It may be something that fits you that you never knew. The opportunity to preach the gospel. I have witnesses that will tell you I never thought I would preach the gospel. I thought I never lived this life as a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. I believed in Christ. I believed in what happened on the cross. But I didn't live for him. And we came to that and you begin to realize what he's done in your life and what he'll do for your life. He'll change your life if you allow him to. But you must allow him to. You must say, Lord, I give you permission to change my life. What do you mean you give God permission? You do, because if you say no in your heart, you say no in your mind, it's no then. Because God's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's not going to inter, inter, uh, interfere in your life if that's the way, you, the way you choose to live your life. He's calling on you, and he's beckoning on you, and he's bumping you, a little bump. I go this way, bump, bump, go to them. No, and you fight it, and you go do your own life. Then you do your own life, and there's a price and a consequence to that lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Just like here when we read that how Israel was overwhelmed, we too become overwhelmed with our problems that surround us. Right? We weep, we mourn, just as Jeremiah did. We get frustrated, just like Jeremiah. But when we switch our eyes and our focus, and we begin to focus on the Lord and the goodness and the compassion and the faithfulness and the mercy of God, take it off of us and put it on him, things begin to shift. A shifting takes place in your life. A newness begins to happen. I've had a, a sorrowful heart here for a while. You guys don't notice it. The people that are close to me, they notice that. And today, I, when I was up here worshiping, I felt a release. And I was saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because we all have our own little struggles. And when you recognize that God has released it, don't doubt it. Just say thank you. Thank you, Father, that you're free. I've been set free. And I'm going to live in that. Amen? Amen? So when we look to the Lord, we have a hope. We have an expectancy. That's what the word means. To have a better, exp a better expectancy than what you do right now. There's something good coming to you, Rhonda. The goodness of God is coming. A lot of you in your marriage, the goodness of God is coming to you. You just have to receive it. And sometimes you don't want to receive it. Right? He's a clown. He's a jerk. I'm being real, right? But let God do this and not you. Don't you try to be God or the Holy Spirit. Let God minister to you and minister to your life. It's, it's a struggle, but I'd rather struggle with Jesus in my corner than struggle without him in my corner. Amen? I'd rather have Jesus with me than the devil with me. The Lord is going to be good to those who wait on him. To those who seek him. You draw close to God, the Bible says, and he draws close to you, Mia. If you go toward God, he's going to go toward you. If you don't go toward God, God is there because he's faithful. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He stands here waiting for us to call on to him and go to him. Come. Come, Frankie, Come. And sometimes he's calling you to the altar. I, there's just something that happens at the altar. I tell you from experience, something happens at the altar. I was just like you guys. I didn't go to the altar. I didn't dance or clap before the Lord. No, oh, no, no, that ain't me, man. Them people are tripping. Man, that's kind of weird, you know. Those were, my, those were my thoughts. 
And then I finally came to the altar. And the Lord breaks things off of you. Knocks things that are on your shoulders off. Chips on your shoulder. Off. Hurt, pain. Sorrowfulness. He may ask you to run sometimes, Ted. I want you to run right now. And you're like, oh, my God, everyone's watching. They're not watching you. That's just man being man, always full of himself. But when you begin to run, and things begin to fall off of you. I've experienced it. When I jump up and down and begin to twirl, things come off of you. You got to see it in the spirit. They just come off of you. And you begin to bless God. I wish I could read this whole chapter to you guys. But I'm going to read from 20 to 27. Lamentations 3 from, uh, let's go to 20, mijo, please. Thank you. Man. Can we get that heater, or the heater, the, uh, the air conditioner down? We did the heater yet last week. That wasn't good. <laughs> we had the heater on, guys. You guys didn't even know that, huh? That bird goes, thank God I was in the children's ministry. <laughs> it's okay. We all make mistakes. We all do things, right? But here it is in verse 20. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. This is Jeremiah declaring to the Lord. This I recall in my mind, therefore I have hope. He has hope in the goodness of God and the mercies of God. He has his hope is in his heart, believing God and his word. Even though you don't see it happening, you got to trust God that it is going to happen. You got to believe God that it's going to work out and I'm going to get healed and I'm going to live this thing out. If you get healed on this side of heaven or on the other side of heaven, you're going to be healed. Some of us believe in heaven, but we don't want to go to heaven. We want to stay on earth. We want to go to heaven. Can I get an amen? This I recall in my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fell not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That's what we're talking about, the Lord's faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. You got to wait and you got to seek God for the Lord to be good. Some of you guys have no relationship with God and you still want God to be good to you. You want to work him like a genie. He works through a relationship and through faith with you. This is the word of the Lord if you guys read it. The Lord is good to those who wait for him and the soul who seeks him. It is good for one to hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke of his youth. Amen? Amen? It's good that we wait on the Lord. And he said silently, quietly. No murmuring, no complaining. Just allow the Spirit of God to do what he has to do in us. And we're going to be better people for it. You're going to be nice. If you were a, a poochy face and an ugly person, an angry person, a prideful person, God knocks that stuff off of you. But you got to seek him quietly. You got to be in his presence. In his presence, there's the glory of God. There's a beautiful thing that happens when you're in his presence. It's hard getting to church. Amen. I got an amen with me, you know. It's hard getting to church. You fight, you battle. I don't feel like it. It's, and especially on these hot days, we can come up with all kinds of excuses. The milk spilled last night in the refrigerator, and I got to clean it up. Oh, how long is that going to take? You know, we think of any excuse not to come to church. Can I get an amen? amen? But we can't allow those excuses to tempt us to stay home. We got to seek God and go to God. And once you're here, it's a beautiful thing to be here, right? I know for me it is. Amen. I love being inside with God. 
So God wants to bless us and he wants to turn things around. The nature of God is faithfulness. That's his nature. To bless us. Amen. And it's declared throughout the word of God. It's declared that he is faithful. He's just. He's loyal. And he performs his word. God performs his word to bless us and to honor us. If you would go to Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. If you have your Bibles. It's right after Proverbs and Psalms. Amen. Let me find it. The Lord is faithful and he's just. He's not just a loving God. He's a just God. And what a man sows, a man reaps. I want you to know that. What you put in the ground is going to come up. If you put watermelons here and cantaloupe here and corn there, that's what's going to come up. Same thing in our lives. Whatever, if you put negativity in your life, Awful thoughts, ugly thoughts, that's what's going to come out of your mouth sooner or later. If you put doubt and disbelief in you, oh, I don't know, I don't know if God works, I don't know, I, you know, I give up, I got an email that uh, a person gave up, I give up on God. Thank God God's not giving up on her. We quit on God, but he doesn't quit on us. And we continue to bless people, continue to honor them no matter what, Amen. Thank you, sir. So the Bible says right here, I'm going to, you can stay right there, Mijo. I'm going to, oh, you went to six. All right, praise God. Did I say it? Oh, okay. Six through, uh, uh, six through nine, thank you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked, those who do iniquity, Forsake his way. Stop doing what you're doing, he's saying. And the righteous man, his thoughts. Unrighteous man, his thoughts, I'm sorry. Unrighteous man, his thoughts. Quit thinking so ugly and so evil. Revengeful. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon him. If we come to God, God will show mercy. If you come to God with a repentful heart, he's going to give you a pardon. He's going to give you a pass for all that you've done and just keep coming, keep going. Amen? Amen. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, uh, uh, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. I'm going to read 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth, uh, forth, uh, forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The word of God will accomplish what its purpose to do in our lives. Just like when water and snow comes down, plants are watered and fruit comes of it. Men save the seeds and they replant it and you eat of that fruit. You can eat of the fruit of God, the spirit that lives within you. You can be happy. You can be joyful. You can be full of life if you would repent and turn to God. Amen? Amen. That man's not going to make you happy. That woman's not going to make you glad. Little seasons. God will make you glad. God will make you happy. And you learn how to share that with one another. Can I get an amen back there? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes the uh, bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, empty, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in all things for which I sent it. God has a purpose for his word in our lives as Christians. Do you have a purpose for God's word? That's the question. Do you have a purpose that God redeemed you, God saved you, God forgave you? What's your purpose? Have you asked God that? You teenagers can ask God that too. What's my purpose in life? What would you require of me, Lord? What do you want of me? And he brings us all together with our gifts and our talents to take over a land. We've been given this land here. We've been given this land to the left, to the right, to the south, to the north, to the east and the west. This land has been given to us. Turning Point Fellowship. But we got to go out and do it. We got to make this land purposeful for fruit of God, for the kingdom of God. We have to fill ourselves up with love and compassion. Someone's going to ask you to pray. You got to be able to, oh, oh, let me call Brother Ryan. Call Ryan, he's two buildings over. No, no, you got to pray. Read Psalms, read Proverbs if you don't know how to pray. The book of Psalms will teach you how to pray, teach you how to worship God. I tell that all the time to the worship team. They should be able to exuberantly worship God. You see the people up here worshiping God exuberantly. Some of you got, oh, they're show offs. Uh, they're weird, man. No, they're not. They have a relationship with God, and they're telling God, thank you. Amen? Because when we served the enemy, didn't we dance? Some of you threw out hips. Dancing so bad, right? But here with God, we can't do that. Why? The Bible says that we can dance before the Lord. That we can shout. That we can have a joy before God. We could have that. We should have that in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible tells us in Numbers 23, 19, after reading this verse here, that God's word does not return to him void, but accomplish all that he's purposed it to do. Numbers 23, 19 is God is not man, that he should lie, or, or a son of man, that, she, that he should change his mind. He has said, and will he not do it? Has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Yes, he will. God will perform his word. His word, not your desires. But when your desires are lined up to the will of God, when your life is lined up to the will of God, asking for the things of the will of God, God will do it for you. I've had a Ladies, in the past, one lady asked me if I could pray for her boyfriend that he would leave his wife and come to her in the church. That's how confused and mixed up the world is. That they think they can come to a holy God, not me, but to a holy God and ask for God to bless the sin. Isn't that crazy? Can I get a one more time. Can I get up? Amen. Amen. That, that's nuts. And I said, I can't do that. And he had some sense. I told you, you can't do that, man. We're sinning. He told her, we're sinning. He knew what he was doing. He said, it can't be done. How's God going to bless that? God doesn't do that stuff. I said, I'm going to pray for you as an individual. 
and I'm going to pray for you as an individual. I'm going to pray that you go back to your wife as an individual. And she's like, <laughs> and I'm going to say, I, and I'm going to pray that you get set free and find a man of your own in Jesus' name. Never came back to the church, but they got prayer. Now they have that word in them. If they believe it or not, it's still in them, that seed, because that seed of life is in us. That's how we're saved today, because somebody dropped a seed in us. Even art, if they say, Jesus loves you, if you tell somebody, your work crew, you know Jesus loves you, man? You're dropping a seed in them, a seed of life. God is faithful to his word. Can I get an amen? So he's not a man that he should lie. Our life as Christians is a lifestyle. Just like a thug lives his life, just like a, a lawyer lives his life, just like a tax attorney lives his life, they live their lives. Lawyers work long hours. They live that lifestyle. They're in and out of court. They're in and out interviewing people constantly. We too as Christians should be gathered together constantly. We have Bible study on Thursdays and church on Sundays. You guys should be here on a Thursday. Inflation doesn't bother you. If we believe that God meets every one of our needs. It's about not being lazy and coming. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. Because you know we get like 40 people on a Bible study. I'm like wow where's everybody at. We should come. We should gather, not forsake the gathering of the brother, as the Bible says. I love when you guys come. If you guys don't come, you're missed. You're missed, Art. I always ask your wife about you. Where's Arturo at, you know? He's not feeling good. She says, there he is. <laughs> oh, he's clowning around. <laughs> Praise God, though. We need to come together. Amen. Amen. If you would go to Psalms 25, 8 and 10. When we ask for forgiveness, when we seek deliverance of certain things, there's a name above all names that it has to be asked in. And that name is Jesus Christ. It doesn't work because you say, forgive me. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. For all that he's done on that cross, Lord God, according to your mercies, according to your righteousness, through Christ Jesus, show me mercy. Show me goodness. And he does. He does. Amen. Let me finish right here. Got the signal back there. There it is. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way, the humble he guides in justice, in right living, how to be just. Oh, God is love. God is love. He is, but he's, he's, he's a just God too. We're just not just people. We just spoil our children. Should have got an amen from all the parents. Can I get an amen? amen. They're spoiled. They don't receive justice. All they do is receive gifts. Even when they're wrong, even when they do wrong, all they get is gifts. Amen? So the humble, he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches in his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. To such, here it is, to such as keep his covenant and his testimony. Those who keep covenant are the ones that made a pact that asked Jesus Christ into their lives. They made a covenant. They made a pact. You made a contract with God. You shook God's hand, if I could say it like that, and said, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. A whole new life. It's a covenant, a blood covenant. Remember when we were kids? I don't know if you guys remember this. I remember you would poke your finger or cut your finger and your friend would do it and you 
rub your blood together. Now we're blood brothers and blood sisters. Whoever is your enemy is my enemy now. And now we're going to be called these. <laughs> we start throwing little names out there. We made a covenant with each other. And that's how it should be with God. We made a covenant with God. God gave his son's blood. Because there's life in the blood. The blood of Christ. And we have that. When we lose our blood, when our blood drains out or stops flowing, we die. And with Christ, as long as we have the blood covering us, we live. We made a covenant. But he says right here, to such as keep his covenant... And it's testimony. He blesses those people. And when we do wrong, because God, God is a just God. He's not a fair God. He's a just God. He's going to keep his word, if you like it or not. He's not going to change his word for angel or for anybody in this room. He's going to keep his word. And you say, oh, God is rough. God is he's, it's too hard. It's too hard because you don't want to give away things. You don't want to rid yourself of certain things, thoughts, people in your lives. Sinful actions, foolish thoughts, prideful actions, prideful spirits. We don't want to rid ourselves. We want to be right all the time. And they'll say, oh, you're a nar narcissist. What did I say that word? Narcissist. Oh, no, you're just disobedient. We ain't going to put no medical term on you or psycho psychological term on you. You're just a disobedient child. All full of pride and want control and want to do it yourself. And until we rid ourselves of that stuff, anger will leave, peace will come. You weren't loved, you'll learn how to love. Hatefulness will leave. Love will come. And you learn how to love people. You learn how to forgive. You're not thinking about how to get back at them. No, you're thinking, I'm going to forgive them the way God forgave me. And you begin to think of your wrong. When you were a jerk, when you were a poochy face, when you were controlling the house, you say, you know what, I'm not doing that no more. I'm giving it all up. That I could be like Jesus. For God is faithful. And God is just. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We're going to receive communion today. Every first Sunday we receive communion. Are we ready for it? Yes, All right, want to pass that out right there? Grab one and pass, out, uh, pass the bowl to the next person. Go ahead and stand up because this is a holy time. This is worship. So if you guys could be quiet in front of the Lord. And if there's any sin in your life, ask God to forgive you. Because this is a holy time. Ask God to forgive you your sins. And even if you don't think you sin, you need a little proud self. <laughs> Ask God to forgive you for that. The only way you didn't sin is when you're dead, I think. Because <laughs> even our foolish thoughts, even our foolish gestures, making fun of people, how they dress, how they talk, how they look. That's God's child. He loves that child. That's why I asked some of you ladies, how's that man treating you? Because he should be treating you like a daughter of God. How, uh, how is that woman treating that man? Be treating her like treating them like a, a king. And if you're not married and you're engaged, 
check it out. That gives you time to see if this is who you really want to marry. And you'll get to see that when they, how they interact with their brothers, the women, how they interact with their brothers, how they interact with their fathers. And vice versa. The man, how he interacts with his mom. How he interacts with his sisters. Giving you little hints of who he is. If he's ugly to his sisters, guess what? He may be ugly to you. If she's disrespectful to her father, which is authority, she'll be disrespectful to you. So this is a time that we ask God for forgiveness for ourselves. And remember what the Lord has done for us. That he died on the cross. But remember that he resurrected too. Can I have one, please? My ushers. Thank you. Can I get one there? Thank you, Hugo. Uh, they always forget me. <laughs> Praise. This is a holy time. This is a time that we celebrate. It's a celebration of what Jesus Christ did for us. Christ was in the upper room with his disciples and others. And he took a piece of bread. And he broke it off the loaf and he passed it on and he told his disciples, when you take this bread, remember what I'm about to do for you on the cross. I'm about to give up my body. I'm going to give my life for your life. And every time you do this, every time you break bread, we should say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you did, for your provision, your protection over my life, for providing for my family. Thank you. We do this in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's partake. The Bible goes further to explain that he grabbed a vessel of wine. And it was wine. So you guys are going to religious folks who were eating it was wine he poured it into a cup and he says this wine that you see going into this cup represents my blood represents me the new testament the blood that will be shed for you on calvary to cleanse you from all your sins he says when you do this do this in the remembrance of what i've done for you Let's do this in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Partake. Thank you, Father. If you pass the cups to the inside, and the usher will pass that bowl. Remember that the Lord has been good to you. Remember that the Lord has been faithful to every one of you. Amen. No matter what you did, no matter what you've done, you've been forgiven. Be faithful to God. You gave your life to Jesus Christ. And for you who haven't given your life to Christ, you said, I, I've never given my life to Jesus. Jesus has never been the Lord of my life. I, I would tell you today, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior, you haven't asked God to forgive you for your sins, you're not saved. Because church doesn't get you saved. Jesus Christ says, I am the way the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but through me. 
It's through Jesus Christ that we have salvation. You got to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross and he was buried three days and he resurrected from the dead and now he lives and sits at the right hand of the Father. And his spirit, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of every believer. And that's why there's conviction when we do wrong, when you sin, when you blow it, when you think wrong, there's conviction. There should be conviction. If there's no conviction, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong with your salvation. If you're not feeling any kind of conviction, if you can just sin freely, I don't know if you're saved. That's going to be between you and God. There should be some conviction. Because when I blow it, when I sin, I got conviction coming to me. The Spirit of God convicts me. And you repent of that and you move on. Can I get an amen, church? So if there's anyone here that has never made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, they've never said, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I recognize you as the Son of God, the one who came to die for my sins and to cleanse me from all wrongdoing. I want to receive you in my life. If you've never said that, raise your hand and we'll get you saved today. Today, eternal life could be promised to you. That if you die today, you'll go to heaven. Not by what we do, but by who we claim as our Lord and Savior through faith. Jesus the Christ. I'm going to heaven. I know that. I'm not bragging or boasting. I boast and I brag in God. But I know if I was to die, I'd go to heaven. In Jesus' name. All right. So we're all Christians. Praise God. Amen. We're all going to the glory. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Are there any first-time visitors here, first time here at Turning Point Fellowship? Right there, we have a, a card for her. We don't have a card for her. Always have a card in your back pocket, gentlemen, always. Let me say that one more time. Always do that, guys, please. We've been doing this too long. Thank you, Lord, yes. Thank you, God, for grace. I love you, my Father. I bless you and I thank you for your grace, your mercy, that are new every day. I thank you that they follow us all the days of our lives. If we look to the left or to the right, grace and mercy has always been there. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ most of all, who died on the cross for our sins, our iniquities, our sicknesses, and our diseases that we can declare and we can say that by the stripes of Christ, we've been made whole, we've been made well, we've been healed. I thank you and I bless you that this word has not fallen on empty ground, but good ground, the hearts and the souls of your people, that the word faithfulness, the scriptures that were written down and thought of and placed in their hearts will always be revisited Father, to them by the Holy Spirit. I pray for a supernatural recall in their hearts, in their minds of Scripture, that they would always remember you and bless you and all that they say and all that they do and all that they think. That's how holy you are, Lord. That our lives no longer belong to us, but they belong to you. We give our lives freely, just as you did. You gave your life freely, and now in turn we follow your example, and we give our lives freely to you. So we ask, Father, for divine protection over us, our children, our grandchildren, over our husbands, over our wives, Lord God, over Turning Point Fellowship as the body of Christ, Lord God. I thank you for the blessings of the food we're about to receive under the canopy there, Lord God. Let us not murmur or complain about the weather. Father, for we all know it is hot. Let those cool drinks, those soft drinks, the waters cool us down and just let us be at peace. 
Let us enjoy ourselves, Lord God. Enjoy one another's company. Keep us cool under the canopies, Lord. Make it cool there for us. Let us fill the breeze of your spirit on our faces, upon our ears and our hair, Lord God. Let us fill you in our, in our hearts, Lord. I thank you, Father, for those that are going to drive home after the food and after the fellowship, Lord, that no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place. I pray for their homes, Lord, and for their jobs. I pray, Father, right now that you would give them promotions, raises, benefits, and that they would enjoy their jobs and not hate their jobs. That they would be grateful that they have a job, Lord, that you provide every single thing that they need according to the riches and glory in Christ. I pray that they would walk in with a bounce in their step. That they would be joyful and happy and glad at work. I pray that your children would not be known as the grumps or the poochy faces, Lord. But they would be known as people of joy and strength, of courage and faith, praying for their co-workers, believing for them, Lord God. I pray right now. I thank you and I bless you for the word, your word that you have blessed today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. We have a, uh, hold on a second.